Ciao everyone, it's Alyssa coming at you with another slow fashion video. This week I wanted to talk about how to build a sustainable or slow fashion closet when you are on a budget or when you don't want to spend a ton of money. This subject comes up so often. If you follow my blog or if you've been following for a while, you know that I shop with a list and that that's a huge part of how I build a more mindful or how I shop mindfully. And so it brings me great pleasure. I'm so excited actually to tell you that this video is actually in collaboration with Shop Tagger. And I thought it was so apropos for today's topic because Shop Tagger is essentially a visual list and it's quite easy to use so you just add it to your Google Chrome browser and it adds a little button to the top of your browser window and that stays there so that when you kind of do any online shopping or research or browsing you can tag a product that you would like to add to your shopping list and it will start building your visual list for you. You can create multiple lists if you like. Once you've tagged the product, you can get notified when the item goes on sale. So that way you don't have to constantly check back and get potentially sucked into a purchase that you didn't actually need. Shop Tagger will actually just keep an eye on it for you and let you know when it goes on sale. This is such a great improvement to my little dinky list that I had on my phone. I'm also really impressed with the caliber of sustainable and slow fashion retailers. There is uh, my favorite secondhand guys, The Real Real, Vestial Collective, Depop is on there, so good. Uh, Everlane Reformation, redone for those beautiful vintage Levi's that have been redesigned. And I also created a list for my home too because I would also like to start converting some of my homewares to reusable and no waste products and this can also be expensive. So I will link to Shop Tagger down below so that you can add it to your Chrome uh, browser. So now that we've gone through that cool app, for those of you who are new, welcome. Every week I talk about slow fashion with a heavy focus on the principles of minimalism. So using and loving what you already have and making smart shopping decisions so that you can create a closet full of pieces that you actually love and wear. So if that sounds like your jam, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday. And for those of you who are coming back, big hello. Welcome back. Thank you so, so much for coming back and watching. Um, I hope you like today's video. Grab your tea, let's jump right in. First of all, I have to start off by saying that the most affordable and inexpensive way to build a sustainable closet is to just use what you already have. But I talk about all, all that all the time. So let's start with shopping secondhand first. This is my absolute favorite way to shop because shopping secondhand, it extends the life wear of garments, which can actually reduce their carbon footprint by I think 20 to 30%, which is amazing. And it also costs way less than paying retail. I think there was a statistic that I heard on a podcast recently that said clothing, as soon as you take the tag off, it's like a car, it devalues by like 50%. You can head to your local thrift, vintage or consignment stores, and there is a bit of a difference. Thrift stores are less curated, whereas consignment stores will have more current contemporary pieces and will likely be a little bit better organized. Although, let me tell you, my local thrift stores are phenomenal. They're, they're organized like boutiques, it's amazing. There's also some amazing online consignment, designer consignment, and thrift sites like Depop and Vestier Collective. However, what I understand about shopping secondhand is that it is time consuming. You have to go often and you have to be mentally prepared to kind of hunt for a little bit. And not all of us have time, a lot of us are busy. So if you want to shop secondhand for the amazing cost benefits, the environmental impact, which is huge, and just the uniqueness of the garments that you can find, I would definitely recommend with starting with the online secondhand space because the search functions make it very, very easy and fast. Clothing rentals is my second favorite option, and this is because not only, again, does clothing rental or sharing really promote a circular economy, the garment is really being repurposed, which is amazing for the environment, um, but I also really like the rental space because it allows you to get very creative with your personal style, test things out that you wouldn't normally wear without having to make a huge cost investment and without being wasteful. I think rentals 
and clothing share communities online are becoming a little bit more popular, so definitely do some research. I think you'd be surprised at how many great rental options there are near you. Gosh, that sounded like a movie trailer, like coming to a community near you. Okay, moving on. Just like clothing rental companies, swap parties and swap events are becoming very popular as well. Or if you don't know of a swap that is close to you, host one yourself. You only need about four or five girlfriends to bring a couple of items each to really find some great pieces. It's also a fun excuse to get together and what I especially like about swaps is that you're clearing out your own closet in the process knowing that what you're clearing out isn't going to landfill and you get to know the story behind the owner of whatever garment you get in return. This next one is more about a mentality shift before you can actually start executing and that is to adopt a saving mentality. And this has a lot to do with how well you can plan what it is that you need. And this is made very easy with the help of apps like ShopTagger because you can find the gap in your closet and put an item on your list that might seem quite expensive and unaffordable at the moment. And that's okay. Putting that item on your list and knowing that you'll have to save incrementally over a couple of months or a couple of weeks, that allows us to A, I think really appreciate the product once it finally reaches our closets in a sense that we'll take better care of it and we'll keep it longer because we really invested in this item. And although it might not seem as though you are saving money at the outset, that you're spending a lot, the amount of time that you keep that item in your closet will far outweigh all of those multiple times that you have purchased something cheap that you've just gotten rid of. So you're probably either spending the same amount of money or even less. So I really think there's something to be said for that saving mentality, which I think we've lost. I think the way we are marketed to and the way retailers are constantly pumping out new collections, uh, we feel this sense of urgency, but really, like, what's the rush? Finally, if you do have to shop or just prefer the shopping experience of a bigger box store or chain store, then there are ways that you can shop slow and intentional and more sustainably within that parameter. When you are shopping in these stores, look for items that are made of natural fibers like organic cottons or linens. Tencel is a good one and is becoming a lot more mainstream. And also make sure that whatever you're purchasing on the label is 100% of that material. Blended fabrics cannot be recycled. I think if you do have to shop at these stores, do a little bit of research and see if they have perhaps an organic textile line or collection or a consciously made collection. I think if you seek out collections within these stores that are either made of recycled textiles or organics or anything like that, at least you are sending the message that this is what consumers are looking for and they need to alter their supply chain. The other thing that you can do when you're shopping at these larger stores is look for classic designs and styles. So those pieces that have very clean, simple silhouettes, there are no trendy embellishments, the colors are often neutral, or it's a color that you love and you know you're going to wear forever and ever, even if it does go off trend or out of style because it suits you and you love it. So looking for those really classic and timeless elements within these stores is also a great way for you to bring in pieces that at least you know you're going to be wearing for a really long time. The other thing that you can do is look really carefully at the garment that you are about to purchase. So flip them inside out and look for clues of quality construction. Make sure seams are finished, edges aren't rough, uh, anything that is lined is a sign of higher quality and good construction and durability. So just look for those marks of a more solid construction and you will hopefully be able to keep that item in rotation for longer. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you did, if you liked it. A uh, huge thank you again to ShopTagger for sponsoring this video and for collaborating with me on this one. I really cannot advocate enough how much shopping with a list really helps me focus in, make fewer wasteful purchases and 
really build a closet of pieces that not only do I need, but that I really love. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing week ahead. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.